are provided for the little kids. As far as the youth group, um, the teens are going to meet this Friday at 4 p.m. at the church, and they're going to head to Springfield for Winter Jam. And uh, we want to thank everybody for helping to support that. The Valentine Banquet was a big help for that. Um, and we're very appreciative. These kids went last year, and they had a great time. So we're just praying that they have a great time this year also. Kenny and Christy tonight will begin a teaching series of the characteristics of God. And they'll be in that for a few weeks. March 17th. We are going to be painting the little kids' classroom. If you have not noticed the big kids' classroom yet, it has been painted, refreshed, and they're going to do the little kids' classroom on the 17th. <laughs> yes, so very good. Yes. Yes, go check it out when that's done because they look great. This Wednesday night, Jeff has been in the series of God and Science. If you have not been, you will want to come out. Um, we've heard nothing but great news on this. He is teaching on evidence and proof of God and godly cycles. That is this Wednesday. Come out and join them. Be enlightened. Um, if you don't know Jeff and Deborah, they're right here in the middle. And uh, just come out and hear what they have to say. Awesome. We have some prayer requests. Can we clap for that too? Yes, we can clap for that too. That's a very good. That's a we have a prayer box by the front door on the table. If there are any prayer needs that need to be put in that box, please do that. They have the ladies have a weekly prayer time that they come in and they pray over those needs. Um, if you also need immediate prayer, please get with one of the elders or somebody to pray with you right away if that is what you need. Um, as far as the back of the bulletin here, we have uh, the elders listed, the board members. We have monthly board meetings. And if you have a topic or something that you'd like to have discussed, just bring that to one of the board members or the pastor. And um, we can put that on the agenda. But it needs to be brought beforehand. Uh, we have some prayer requests, guys. Uh, Jan Hefner, she is back in the hospital. Um, Barbara Masters has been in the hospital. She has some COPD. Uh, Calvin Bunny, he's just been battling cancer. We need to keep him in prayer also. Barbara Tabanero has not been feeling well. And our bookkeeper, Joyce, who is in the office right now, her husband <coughs> had a shoulder injury. Uh, we need to keep him in prayer as well. His name is Ron. <clears throat> okay, guys, the last thing in the bulletin is our Easter egg treasure hunt is going to be on March 31st, right after Easter service. So that's for the little kids. Um, weather pending, if it rains or if it's really cold, we'll just do it in here. Uh, so if you'd like to donate plastic eggs or candy for that, please do so. We appreciate any of that. If you want to go ahead and fill the plastic eggs with candy, then bring them. However you want to do it, it's fine. It'll work. And spread the word on that. All the little kids just come out, and they always have a great time on that. Which will just lead me into what the Bible, what does the Bible say about giving? The Bible has a lot to say about giving. Jesus declared that our attitude toward money is indicative of the focus of our heart. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That's in Matthew 6, 21. It is helpful to look at our various financial accounts and observe how we spend our money. Our love for God and his work will show up in how we give our money away. And there are some, some principles to guide us. Uh, God owns everything and gives his things, including money, to whom he chooses. That's in Psalm 24, 1. Also Proverbs 22, 2. How we spend and give away God's money is a fundamental aspect of worship. Colossians, Colossians 3, 17 commands us to do everything for God's glory, whatever we do. Giving to the church and the ministry of the gospel is commanded by God. That's 1 Corinthians 16, 1 through 2. 
Basically, guys, you cannot outgive God, and He wants a joyful, cheerful giver. So I try to teach my kids: if you have to reluctantly give it, you might as well not. If you're doing it joyfully and for the Lord, you can never outgive Him. So um, we'll just go into some prayer for the people who need our who need prayer, and just for the week, guys, and then the praise team can come up. Let's just bow our heads. Lord, we bring these prayer needs before you, God. We ask that wherever they are today, Lord, that you put your hands upon them for healing, for peace in their hearts, and for strength, God. We ask that you bless the pastor today and the message, message, God, that it gets through to the hearts of those that need it, Lord. If there's nobody here today that has not accepted Jesus as their Savior, that they come forward today, Father. We ask that the praise and worship team just brings the word, Lord, that somebody just comes forward, Father, that needs you. We ask that you keep each one of us safe throughout the week, Lord. We ask that you bless any of the giving and the tithing, Lord, to do whatever it is for your glory, God. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Can I just take a few moments to greet one another? There are a lot of people traveling today. Some are sick. Uh, some uh, even different families this spring break are traveling, so be praying for them. But let's take a few moments to give you opportunity to tithe and give your offerings and greet one another. <laughs>
No, Scripture says without a vision, we perish. We pray that God be our vision and that my mic continues going forward. Hey, we pray God be our vision that he comes soon. We pray God that Jesus comes soon. Are you ready for his coming? Are you anxious for his coming? We ought to be excited about the King of Kings coming back. In a few moments, we're going to be talking about the different kingdoms, even in our prayer, the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come. Has that been our prayer, his kingdom come? We're going to be talking about the kingdoms in a few moments. But let's take a few moments to just honor him and pray to him. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your mercy, your grace. We give you all the glory and praise. You are our mighty God. You are our king of kings. You are greater than anything we may face. And Father, today we pray for those that are hurting, those that need healing in their physical bodies, emotionally and spiritually. God, I pray your blessings. I pray, Lord, that we resist the devil and he will flee. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to us. God, I pray you draw nigh to our hearts. We empty ourselves to receive from you today. And Lord, we thank you for every person that's here today and even those that are traveling I pray you're traveling mercies upon them. Keep them safe, Father. And we give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, the church said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated as children's church and preschool at this midst of this time. <coughs> Boy, it's quiet today. It's been kind of quiet mornings this morning. I think it's the time change. Does that mess with anybody, the time change? A little bit? How many of you have got that figured out? I thought, my wife and I were talking last week. It said, spring forward. Move your clocks forward. So she said, uh, well, I shouldn't say we. I put it all on us. Thought that you gained an hour of sleep. We lost an hour of sleep, right? And so I think we're all wanting to get that back. And that uh, it will come around. We'll adjust. Uh, I think the, also the older I get, the harder it is to make that adjustment. Can anyone else relate to that? I don't know if that's me, right? Well, today I want to, if you'll turn to Matthew 6, Matthew 6, actually starting in verse number 5. Matthew 6, verse 5. And we'll be reading what's called as the Lord's Prayer, and actually another Lord's Prayer, if you will, can be commonly referred to in John 17. But today we're looking at Matthew 6, verse 5. The title of the message is, Your Kingdom Come. Your Kingdom Come. And we're going to be talking about what that kingdom is, and the realities of it. So first, let's begin in verse number 5 of chapter 6. And when you pray, Jesus is speaking... You shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assured, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to the Father who is in secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask them. In this manner, in this manner, therefore, pray. If you know the Lord's Prayer, you're welcome to repeat it with me. Our Father in heaven... Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. That's the Lord's Prayer. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. If you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. 
Well, there's a lot there in that Lord's Prayer. And we know Jesus is saying that we are to pray from the heart. We're to just pray. And so often, you know, even with youth, when we teach them, how do we pray? We say, just speak into Jesus. Just talk to the fathers. He doesn't want to hear vain repetitions. So many people think they'll be uh, recognized or heard by their fancy elite prayers and repetitions. But my friend, we need to be able to pray to the Father from the heart. He wants a personal relationship with you. So there's a lot to be talked about in this prayer. Jesus is teaching us how to pray. But I, there's a, a statement that stands out. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Right? Your kingdom come. So it raises the question of what is this kingdom? What is this kingdom? Your kingdom come. That's what we're praying for and praying for his will be done. Well, today we're going to go a little deeper into the kingdoms that exist. Two spiritual kingdoms that exist, actually. Two of them. When we see the kingdom come, it will be done. There are two kingdoms that exist. We're going to talk about those and specifically today when we delve a little bit deeper into the kingdom of darkness. I don't want to dwell there, but we need to know our enemy, right? We need to know who our enemy is. So we're going a little deeper into this and for you to study into this. And so not to inflict fear. I don't want to stay there too long, but I, cause I want to end up talking about the kingdom of life. Okay. But to, we must know who our enemy is, so I need to identify the two kingdoms. One is the kingdom of God, the kingdom of life, right? Let's back up a little bit. How many kingdoms are there? Two kingdoms, spiritual kingdoms. Because when we think of kingdoms, we think King Nebuchadnezzar, the Medes of Persians, Darius, Darius and uh, Alexander the Great, the, king, the Greek, Grecian king, or the Roman Empire with the Caesars. But my friend, we're talking about a far greater kingdom than any of those. We're talking about two spiritual kingdoms, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of light is the kingdom of God, and they are totally opposites. And I want to say at the start that you are in one of those two kingdoms. Okay? You are in one of those two kingdoms. You will make a choice today before you leave as what kingdom you want to identify with. And by making no choice, you inherently are, are falling into the kingdom of darkness if you don't choose light. The kingdom of God is in direct opposition to the kingdom of darkness. His kingdom is eternal. God's kingdom is eternal. Did you know you are an eternal being? You will exist for an eternity. You are an eternal being. We believe at the point of conception you were conceived and that you are an eternal being. So God's kingdom is eternal. And it has uh, doesn't, is not restricted by time or space. Can you imagine when we get to heaven. Of uh, this very fact of not being restricted by time. I mean we are all constrained by time. Even service time. Or, or even some of you maybe by the time the message is coming closer to the end. You're looking at time and saying. Hey is he ever going to stop talking? You know, but we're restricted by time. I've got places to be. I've got meals to eat. I've got responsibilities and deadlines to meet, even this upcoming week. What would it be like, think about it, in the kingdom of heaven, when we're no longer restricted by time? Those that we know that have passed on, they are no longer restricted by time. I'm convinced that when we see them, those that were of the kingdom of life, when we see them again, they're going to think of seeing you. And it may be in 20, 30, 50 years. And they'll go like, wow, it's just like yesterday to them. In other words, not restricted by time. Well, God is not restricted by time. Now, he himself is light. Which, by the way, uh, refresh my memory, and those of you may help me. How fast does the speed of light move? Can someone tell me? Say it louder. Three times ten to the eighth meter per second. What he said. <laughs> the speed of light. Did you know at the speed of light, time stops? Is that correct? That the speed of light, time stops. That's what I've heard. Even in black holes and what have you. It's interesting to think when you have reached, achieved that certain speed, 
time stops. So God is light, right? His kingdom is light. Uh, in his kingdom, there is no darkness. It's not polluted. It's not mudded. There is no darkness in his kingdom. On the opposite side, the other kingdom is the kingdom of Satan, which is the kingdom of darkness. Uh, Satan's kingdom is not eternal. It's temporal. Not eternal. It's temporal. As a time, it is very limited. Satan knows his time is coming to an end. He knows it is limited. As to space, it's limited to the air and of the earth. Satan's kingdom is of the air and of the earth. His kingdom is darkness. It's the exact, exact opposite of God's kingdom. So that's why I'm telling you that you need to make a decision. Are you of the kingdom of light or of the kingdom of darkness? As we delve into that, that will be the question. In addition... There, uh, there is a great difference between God's kingdom, which is a legal kingdom. After all, God created the heavens and the earth. He's the creator. He is God eternal. And le he legally has a right to this kingdom, to this earth. He legally has a right. Did you know uh, Satan is illegal? He, he is an illegal patron. He has no right to God's creation. He has no right to God's creation. Uh, his kingdom was established by rebellion against God. We're going to talk more about that in a few moments. It's entirely illegal. Did you know Satan's a liar? Have you heard? Did you know he's real? He's the father of lies. He is real. And, and here's the thing about this reality and this importance of this message. Because we live in a world that will recognize good and evil. But they don't want to go any deeper to recognize God and the demonic forces that be. And my friend, if we don't know our enemy, we find ourselves fighting with the wrong person. It may be the person at work, it may be even relatives, what have you, uh, that you're fighting with. You must realize that it's far beyond that. And we find ourselves shadow boxing, basically, and never winning. We need to learn to do spiritual warfare. We're going to talk about it in a few moments, too. But we also need to know the reality of darkness and the reality of light. There are two kingdoms. We are in spiritual warfare. We are at war. You're at war. Whether you do it or not, you are at war. You say, well, Pastor, what are you talking about? Uh, I know there's war in, in other countries. We read about it, hear about other wars, even in Israel, which is in Scripture as well. We are at war, but you're at war spiritually. And the war is going on for your very life. For your life. Because Satan wants to drag you, pull you into his kingdom. And apart from Christ, you are in that kingdom. The kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of Satan. But when, when you receive Christ, you are transferred. And we're going to talk more about that a little later in the message too. So we are at war. So you want, that's why we struggle so much with our flesh and our spirit. Well, I have my flesh totally under control. Really? You never lose your temper, which is kind of a funny term you think about, to lose your temper. I think a lot of us have found our tempers. <laughs> we didn't lose it. We found it. And we also have a tendency to fight back in times, and we have a tendency to, to fall, fall into the prey of the very tactics that Satan wants us to do. So we need to be aware. We need to be wiser. We need to learn of his tactics. And, and when we learn of his tactics of the kingdom of darkness, we go, ah, oh, I see what you're doing. I see what you're, you're messing with me, and you're using these people, but it's greater than these people. There's a kingdom of darkness behind them. So we need to understand that. So that's why the spiritual warfare is taking place. As a matter of fact, even with Jesus in Luke 4, Satan referred to his kingdom. He referred to it in this. It says, then the devil taking him, Jesus, on a high place, a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to Jesus, let this soak in. The devil said to Jesus, as he became man and in the flesh. 
all this authority, this authority I will give you and their glory. For this has been delivered to me and given to you whomever I wish. See, the word kingdom is an interesting word. It, it comes from the Greek of uh, basileia, if I can pronounce that correctly. It means authority. Authority. That is, not to be confused with an actual kingdom, but rather the right or authority to rule over a kingdom. So what Satan is saying is, I have the authority over this kingdom of this world. You can fall under my authority, and I'll give you power. I'll give you all this glory you see before you, because this is my kingdom. In reality, isn't that a lie? I mean, whose kingdom is it? God's the creator. Satan's the illegal, illegal person in this kingdom. But he's, he's proposing that, saying, all this oppression you're going to face, and these people that you know are going to betray you anyway, I can give you all authority over them. And they'll love you. They'll, they'll run to you if you'll just bow a knee to me. See, even Satan recognizes his kingdom that exists. So that's a reality, my friend, is his kingdom exists. It's important, and I have this in my notes written down, it's important that we know who our enemy is and to recognize his kingdom. Satan's kingdom is a reference to his authority over those spiritual entities that are under him. You know, when someone says, I don't serve anybody. Really? You're under authority of Satan then if you're defying God. What? Satan? When, you, when we think that if a person is under the authority of Satan, they must be a possessed individual. That Satan has conquered and has overcome. But my friend, apart from Christ, you are in that kingdom. Because spiritually, you are dead. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? We're, but back, what are you talking about? See, when man fell, even clear back to Adam and Eve, they fell from the kingdom of God into the kingdom of darkness. Well, I'm not too bad of a person. I, I don't hang with some of those terrible people. Do you ever sin? Oh, I never sin. First John chapter 1, verse 9. He who says he has no sin is a liar, and the truth's not in him. Right? So we are sinners in need of a Savior. So apart from from a Savior, His name is Jesus Christ, you are in the kingdom of darkness. You've been blinded. It's, an, it's important you understand that, because you can never be delivered from something until you recognize where you are. Where you are. Satan's rebellion. Let's talk about this for a little bit. And I did look up some slides on this because I don't want to look at kind of evil stuff as I was looking into it. I just typed up Satan's rebellion. Scripture talks about his rebellion. Let's, for a few moments, address that. Who he is, he was created, a created being, and his rebellion. It even says this in Isaiah 14, 12 and following. It says this. It's referring even, I believe, and some have differed from it, I believe it's talking about Satan himself. You have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. How you are cut down to the ground, who laid the nations low. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mountain of assembly in the far north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. Satan wants to be God. I will make myself like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol and the depths of the pit. See, Satan is a liar and he wants to convince you that he is God and he is not. He is not. So he is a, but he wants to be God. He wants all power and authority. Isn't that the way mankind is? They seem to want to thrive and want power and authority. We see that in our political systems. We see them trying to rise to power, and they'll tell you they care about you, but do they really? Do they really? 
What they really care is, is about putting you under control and under their power. That's a tactic of Satan. That's what he does. And even in the heavens, he was cast out of the heavens because of his pride. Ezekiel 28, 11 through 13 says this. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, take up a, a lamentation for the king of Tyre. And say to him, Thus says the Lord of God, You were the seal of protection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. He's referring to Satan himself as an archangel. He was beautiful. He was created by God. And you were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardis, the topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, uh, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was uh, prepared for you on the day you were created. See, God even talks about in the scripture here about Satan being created. He was a beautiful angel, one of the archangels. He was created, yet he was cast out of heaven because of his pride. That is the person. The one who is the principalities and powers of the year. He is Satan himself, and he rules over the dominions of this world. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about this, but in a little bit, we're going to change course, okay? But we need to know our enemy. Satan's kingdom, his kingdom exists. Satan's kingdom is the sphere of Satan's reign. The Lord Jesus once called Satan the prince of this world. He is the prince of this world. <coughs> Within this kingdom, there are various ranks. Within these ranks are fallen angels who followed Satan into rebellion against God. In scripture, I believe it refers to one third of the angelic host fell with him <coughs> at one time. It is amazing to think about being in the presence of God and, and being full of pride. And falling from heaven. Falling from God. In Hebrews chapter 6 it says to once been enlightened. And, and tasted of the goodness of God. And to turn away. It's impossible to restore. Please keep in mind. Ain't, there is no redemption for an angel. There is no redemption for an angel. Matter of fact they ponder at you. They ponder at you. And even the angels of heaven. The, angels of, the godly angels ponder at Jesus Christ and what he did for us. They, they look at us and they see the love God has for you and that he would pay the price to redeem you because there is no redemption for angels that have been in the presence of God. There is none. They're hopeless. They are hopeless. And if they can bring a person, a loved one you know, or maybe your enemy that you know, if they can bring them a place them in the kingdom of darkness they are hopeless just like them hopeless so you see it says in Ephesians 6 12 this for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against rulers against the authorities against the cosmic powers over the present darkness <coughs> Against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Who's the we? It's us. We battle against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. We're going to talk a little more about this even in just a few moments. Go a little deeper. We're going to go a little deeper today. About who they are, your battle that you face. And I want to stress this, is that we need to become more wise about the conflict that we have. Because so often we are fighting battles and you cannot win. You can't win because if you fight them in the flesh, there is no victory in those battles. Some of the battles we face are purely, totally spiritual battles that must be done and won through spiritual concepts and spiritual tools. And by the saints of God, we have to become more wise about these battles and how to fight them. And actually, as a pastor, it's my job and duty and calling to equip you so that you can do so. Because we battle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers on high. So let's talk a little bit more about these powers on high. 
And now we're going to go into a depth, a level that you may or may not have even heard. Uh, it's in Genesis 6, verses 1 through 4. And there are two different concepts here. One is that, and here, before I go there, maybe some of your questions would be, what is a fallen angel? What are demons? What are evil spirits? Are they the same? Are they different? What are these beings? We're going to delve into that for a few moments. I will give you two different perspectives. I can tell you where I kind of lean, but I will give you both perspectives. In Genesis 6, uh, verses 1 through 4, it says this. When man, you go over to the side, when man began to multiply in the face of the earth, and, uh, and, and the daughters were born to them, the sons of God, the sons of God, saw that the daughters of men were attractive, and they took as their wives any they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man, however, forever rather, for he is flesh. His days shall be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days. And also, afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, these were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. This is a pivotal scripture. There are two different perspectives. One is the sons of men were men of the other nations, the ungodly nations that came into the, the, the covenant relationship with God, the people of God, the women of God. And they had ungodly uh, seed as a result of that. The other is this, and this is where I would lean, okay? Is that the sons of men, sons of, that's mentioned here in Scripture, I'm sorry, sons of God, were actually fallen angels. Fallen angels that saw the beautiful women of the days of old. And that they had relations with these women, and it created a whole race known as the Nephilim. And you can see even in bones of today, you see giants that are found, and even Goliath. You read about that with David and other references. Why do I go there? Because I want to explain a few things that maybe you pondered or haven't pondered. We're going to go a little deeper today, and then we'll come back out, and I want to talk about the kingdom of light. But in the kingdom of darkness, if this be true, that there were giants on the land, as the scripture says here, as a result of that relationship of fallen angels and women of the earth that created the whole race. So you may ponder after the flood. The flood was after this, right? The flood came afterwards. That God destroyed the world as a result of this pollution, even the pollution of the seed they intended. And it would seem to indicate that that took place. And as a result of the flood, we know what took place. Only eight souls were saved. Noah, his wife, and his three children and their wives, eight souls, were saved. But as a result, if you study into some of these things, as I've been reading and studying into, uh, some of you have been as well. As a result, what about these giants? What about these angel and, and mankind women uh, that had relations and had a, a race of people? What happened to them? What happened to them? It seems to indicate, and you're going like, some of you were like, what are you talking about? Seems to indicate that as a result of the flood, that they, this race of people became disembodied souls. They lost their bodies, but they were still existent in the principalities and the powers of the air. These are demonic forces and evil spirits that exist in the air looking for a body to possess. Ponder this for a while. As a result of that, we see even today that Satan is the ruler of the principalities and powers of darkness. We know the fallen angels that are under his lordship, if you will, even over this world, the reality of this world. This is in our world. And that it could be that there is also demonic forces, even demons and or evil spirits that exist as a result of of all these consequences. That being said, it would seem to differentiate between uh, Satan himself, fallen angels, demons, and evil spirits. That may answer some of our questions, even with 
demons and evil spirits as to are they fallen angels? There are some that believe such. I would lean more toward the, the reality of the others because there's different evidence that seems to point that way. Wow, Pastor, this is deep stuff. This is a little encouraging right now. Don't worry. We're not going to stop here. Aren't you glad? We're not going to stop here. But we need to know our enemy. We need to know our enemy. And when Scripture's talking about principalities and powers of the air and the demonic forces that be, that's your spiritual warfare. That is what you're facing. But it also gives you tools and the ability to fight those battles. So we need to be wise about knowing our enemy, and then we need to know how to address our enemy. We know that we are of God. And the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. The whole world lies in the power of the evil one. Well, that's, that goes against a lot of teaching today. There's a lot of teaching today that will tell you, you are good. <clears throat> the world is good. There are some bad apples in this world, but, you know, inherently, mankind is good. And you're good. And, and there are some churches today that will tell you that you are good. And God wants to bless you because you are good. I will tell you just the opposite. You are not good. Well, thanks, Pastor. I really appreciate that. Come to church, tell me I'm no good. Well, we're all in the same boat. We are not good. We walk in darkness. Apart from Christ. And you can never be saved until you understand you need to be delivered. You need to repent and confess Him as Lord because you are in a hopeless position. And the reality, Scripture even says, this world dwells in the power of darkness. Now, mind you, Satan is a thief and he is stolen for principalities and powers of the air for a time. His time is limited, it's coming to an end. Does he have power? Yes. But I have exciting news I'm going to tell you in a few moments about the power you have at your disposal. The power you have within you to fight these battles. Hey, my friend, I want you to learn through this series of your kingdom come how to fight these battles. Be more wise on fighting these battles. Quit shadow boxing. It wears you out. No one wins. Be on your knees. Learn how to do spiritual warfare. Learn how to fight those fights you have every day. The reality is that when you fall on your knees and you fight these battles before the Lord, that you can be victorious. But if we fight in the flesh, we lose. We lose. We lose. We need to know who our real enemy is. And there are marriages today even struggling that they think their enemy may be the person they're married to. And while they may not be behaving well, and there's neither one of us that are good, right? But we do know the one who is. And we need to learn how to fight our battles, even in our marriages, relationships, and even in churches. Churches. When churches split, Satan's winning. Can someone say amen? amen. When churches fight, Satan is winning. When we come together as one, we are strong. Matter of fact, the Spirit of God brings unity to fight those battles. I'm here to equip you, first, to know your enemy. You need to know that this world is of demonic forces and darkness. That's why they behave like they do. That's why Satan will draw you in, draw you into, I mean, to entice you, if you will, seduce you, if you will, Proverbs says, and bring you in because he's out to steal, kill, and destroy you, 1 Peter 5, 8. He's a devouring lion. We know that. You need to know that. Don't forget that. You know, through the years, even in my route at UPS, that uh, there was different discussions I had. And unfortunately, I remember one in particular, one lady that attended church every week, but didn't even believe that of, of demonic forces and evils. Didn't even believe in it. She, would, uh, she didn't understand, didn't want anything to do with all that. Just kind of thought, that's just nice to go to church. Let me do my thing. My friend, you're losing your battle. You need to know who your enemy is. Know who your enemy is. That's why Jesus came saying this.
that's not repeating. You're right back where you came from, right? <laughs> not by sounding so wise. No. No. Turn 100% away. Don't, you're not the same person. You, you need to realize that when you're born again, you're not the same person. You were, you were in the kingdom of darkness. You were that. But now, because of your Savior, you've been transferred. We're going to look at that scripture in a little bit. That's why Jesus said, repent. That's essential. You must repent. You must realize who you were and now who you are. There are many people in churches today that don't understand this concept at all. As a matter of fact, they think if I go to church, do religious things... Then go right back to the world and do the same things I was doing. My friend, you're trying to do two different kingdoms, and that's not going to work. Because if you've been born again, you won't want to go back to the old ways. Amen. You won't want to. It's unfortunate when churches are saying, just say this prayer, you're good, when there's no repentance or realization of what you're coming from. Of what you're coming from. And you need to understand what salvation means. It means a transferal. It means you've been born again. You're no longer that person. You're no longer in that kingdom. That's why Jesus said repent. He said, for the kingdom of heaven is coming, come near. The kingdom of God. Are you ready to make a change now? I didn't go awful deep into it because it went deeper. But I don't want to dwell in the kingdom of darkness. I don't want to be there, do you? Boy, that was weak. I don't want to be in the kingdom of darkness, do you? No. Oh, right, there we go. Finally, yeah. I know this time thing is really killing us, right? So we need that. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest to your soul. That's in Matthew 11. You'll find rest. What do you mean rest, Pastor? What do you mean? What's this rest? I thought just going to church. No, it's bigger than just going to church. It's about being born again and finding Jesus. And he comes into your heart. And you were born again, born of the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 1.13 says it's the guarantee of your salvation. You're sealed with the Spirit. You're not the same person. This concept of religion and going back into the world are totally opposites. You need to understand there are two kingdoms. Two kingdoms. And don't play with the kingdom of darkness. Don't play with the kingdom of darkness. I've seen, I've witnessed people have come forward that have been even possessed. I don't know you're to scare you, but possessed and oppressed. I've seen deliverance from possession. Witnessed it. You can't tell me that doesn't happen. Too late. Already know. I've seen people come and be possessed 
And all those things, some, not all, but some of the things you see in the movies, I've witnessed some of those things. Okay? I've seen someone declaring a name in the demonic kingdom to rise to walk a new life being delivered. Praise God. And declaring a different name. He's declared the name of Jesus. And he was delivered. He was set free. Set free as a result of Jesus in Jesus' name. My friend, I want to tell you, you don't realize how much power is in Jesus' name. You don't realize what deliverance you have in front of you. You don't realize the power you have within you. In the name of Jesus, the demons will run in his name. They don't want anything to do with him. In the name of Jesus, Satan is fear. In the name of Jesus, you have power before you. It's not about just a religion. It's about a born-again God living in you. Yes. And we've got to learn to fight and know who your enemy is. So we see that Jesus said, repent and come unto me, even to come into the kingdom of light, to take back what was stolen. In John 15, 16, it says, you didn't choose me. I chose you and called you for a purpose. He delivered you. You thought you just got better, right? Mm -hmm. You thought, I just, I became, my wife would get cringe on this one. I became more gooder. <coughs> I cringe on that one. No, 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 you didn't. No, you were transferred into the kingdom of light. Hey, we need to celebrate more. I'm going to get to that one in a moment. I'm going to head myself. Because in Colossians 1, 13 through 14, it says this. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness? Jesus has delivered you from that. And hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of <coughs> sins. Do you realize what happened at the point of salvation? At the point that you received Christ in your life, you were born again. You were literally delivered from the kingdom of darkness. And you're, you're, you are no longer of that kingdom. Now you are of the kingdom of light. Now you are of the kingdom of that are deliverance. Now you are in an eternal king, kingdom. You're in the right, you made the right choice. You're in, now you have peace with your God. Now you've been delivered from that darkness that oppressed you. Now you've been delivered from that, that lying spirit. And we've seen people delivered from that. We've been seeing people delivered from all sorts of darkness in your life. And now you're born again. And you have the power to overcome the, the powers of darkness. You have within you the power of God. And you can learn how to fight your battles. Hey, even today or next week or next month, years, whatever to come, you're going to face battles. Sometimes it's with your, your relatives. Sometimes it's with your co-workers. You're going to face battles. You will face them. And quite honestly, sometimes you don't behave well. Or me. But my friend, I'm telling you that you have power within you to fight those battles. And unfortunately, too many Christians today are, are fighting darkness, whether it be in their own life or other people's lives, on a fleshly level. And my friend, you're not going to win that battle. You're, you're not going to win. You can win when you fight spiritual battles. When you learn in Ephesians 6, it gives you the tools, the weapons to fight the darkness. Because you've been transferred. Now here's the question. Have you? Have you? Do you realize what you were and who you are now? Or have you been maybe coming to church and dabbling, testing the faith, but you're still in the darkness? My friend, it's going to consume you. It's a short kingdom. And if you don't know Christ apart from a Savior, his name is Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, no one comes to the Father but by me. He's the narrow way. He's the chief shepherd. He's the one that will lead his sheep. <coughs> Excuse me. It's on my throat. <coughs> he will <coughs> lead. <coughs> you can <break. coughs> 
Apparently, Satan didn't want me to say that. <laughs> he will lead his sheep. There we go. He will lead his sheep from the powers of darkness into the kingdom of light. And that's where Jesus is leading. He's the good shepherd. He, he's the one you can follow. Be careful following there. Be careful. Be very careful. Follow the good shepherd. He will never lead you astray. Keep your eyes on Jesus. See, it's not about necessarily the, the church name that you are in as much as the person that's being preached in the church. His name is Jesus. It's not about things you do to make me happy as a pastor. No, it's about pleasing the Savior. And his name is Jesus. It's about him. He's where the power is. He is even the baptizer of the Holy Spirit, it says in Scripture. His name is Jesus. That's where you're going to find your power. Run to him so you can fight the powers of darkness. They're very real, my friend. They're very real. I'm giving you a taste of what they are. I want nothing to do with them. Do you? Too many of us have been dabbling in the powers of darkness, finding immediate pleasure in circumstances that will lead you down a dark path. My friend, there is no substance to that. There, there's no future other than a death and decay. There's no brilliant future in the powers of darkness, the kingdom of darkness. I want to tell you, you need to be a child of the king in the kingdom of light. It even says this in Matthew 6, 24. No one can serve two masters. No one. You're, you're serving a master. You're serving a master. No one can serve two. <clears throat> Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and King James says men or money. You can't do it, my friend. You, you'll never find peace. You'll never find joy. I always tell people this when I meet with them. I say, write down your top five priorities that you want your life to be. What it should be. Come on, you know what it should be. Write down the five priorities that's a reality of how you're living. Do they jive? Do they jive? You can't walk in the kingdom of darkness and ever have peace in the kingdom of light. Who are you? Who are you? Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? You know, so often I think that we think that our name can be written and can be erased so easily. It's not that way. You've been transferred. You've been brought into the kingdom of the light from where you were. You can never realize how glorious it is, how victorious it is. You can never realize how much of a blessing that is, that he would love you so much to pay that price you could not pay. You had no deliverance. You had none. You had no hope. Because the kingdom of darkness will always end and darkness decay. It will end. Now, as a result of receiving Christ, you have hope. You've been transferred into the kingdom of light, into God's kingdom. My friend, here's the question in closing today. Where are you? Well, pastor, am I that bad? Apart from Christ? Yes. You need to realize you need a Savior. The question is, have you received him? He paid the price you could not pay. He loves you look that much. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. Whomsoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In the upcoming weeks, we're going to be talking about the kingdom, your kingdom come. One, we've learned today that the kingdom of God is who lives within your hearts. If you're a believer, if you receive Christ, you're of the kingdom of God. Be excited. Be joyous. They'll say, oh, um, <laughs> I'm a believer. Jesus purchased me. Come on, wake up. Smack yourself out of it. Come on, do you realize what you've got? Do you realize you've you're been transferred? You're in the kingdom of light. 
for an eternity? I mean, we have reason to celebrate, Christians. We have reason to be excited. You realize what you've been delivered from? I'm a new creature. All things made be made new, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. You're not the same. You've been delivered. You've been set free. Or have you? Have you? Which kingdom? That's why I said at the beginning today, you've made a choice. And you will make a choice today. Whether you came forward or did not come forward, you will make a choice today. Are you in the kingdom of light or the kingdom of darkness? Don't tell me you're a good person. I've already proved that wrong. You're not. There's none good, no, not one. None righteous, no, not one. No, are you a saved person? Have you received Christ in your life? As a result of receiving Christ, he says in Scripture, people went so far as to go and get dumped. In other words, they celebrate Christ and say, he came into my heart. He came into my life. And I want to celebrate him. And I don't care who knows. In fact, I want the kingdom of darkness to know I'm not their child anymore. And I will reenact the death, burial, resurrection, and baptism. I'll be buried to rise and walk in newness of life. That newness of life is walking in the kingdom of light. Not the kingdom of darkness. You've changed your ownership. And does that mean Satan gets upset when you transfer? You bet he does. But you know what? What you tell him from this day forward, get thee behind me, Satan. You no longer have a right on me. I've been transferred. I'm not the same. And I refuse to serve two masters. I refuse to serve two masters. That's a miserable place to be when you try to do that. Trying to make everyone happy, then no one's happy. Which master are you serving today? Let's pray. Father, even today, I pray for continued revelation, Father, that we would see. Speak to our hearts, God. Father, today, if there's one that heard that within the sound of my voice that realizes they've never made a commitment to Jesus Christ, and that the fear, there's fear in their hearts. And they're not ready to die. They're not ready for Jesus to come back, as we sang today. And Father, today I pray that they make a decision. They make a change. And they get their lives right through Jesus Christ. They receive you as Savior. Now, quickly. So that they can say, even so come. Father, I pray that, that those changes would be made. And that people would choose the kingdom of light. And refuse the kingdom of darkness. Father, I pray that we would resist the devil and that we, we rebuke Satan's power. We rebuke the evil that comes against us. And Lord, we as Christians sometimes battle in our mind, even doubt. Father, right now we reject that. We reject oppression. We reject doubt. And we claim victory in Jesus' name. Father, continue to teach us the power at our disposal to overcome and be victorious. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I, I declare as the, as the praise team is coming, I say this, what decision are you making? There's been times I've preached I've wanted to go back and grab people. Have you ever wanted to do that? You wanted to go back and say, come on, how much more is it going to take to get you to come? I've fought from keeping going back and grabbing people and saying, because I can't make you come to Christ. You have to surrender. Sweet surrender. And that's God's job. The Holy Spirit brings conviction. And maybe there's something you need to change in your life. You're tired of dabbling. You know you want to be a child of God. You are the child of God. And you've been walking in darkness. And that's a miserable place to be. And you want peace. Maybe today you need to come to an altar, a place that maybe it's at your chair or up front or whatever it may be. Maybe you need to find someone and say, pray for me. I want that peace you're talking about. And I don't have it. It's up to you. It's up to you to answer the call. It's up to you to respond. If you're a believer today and you're born again and you're celebrating, celebrate. Be excited about what you, you realize what you have. You have victory. You've won. You've won. And you have power.
Next week, we're going to talk about seek ye first, first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek him first. Do you know him? This is your opportunity to respond however God's leading you as we say.
Isn't it great to know? I feel like we all just come together and hold hands and say, this is going to be like heaven. This is a taste of heaven. We, we come together. This is your brothers and sisters. And maybe there's someone, here's another message. Maybe there's someone you're at odds with that's a brother or sister that you, that you just struggle with. Hey, it's time to get it right because God may make you next door to them for an eternity. <laughs> Better get it right now. Better get used to it now. Hey, we get to be together for an eternity because this is an eternal kingdom. It's eternal, guys. It only gets better. It only gets, what's the worst man can do to me? Take my life for me to live as Christ and die as gain. Hey, it only gets better from here. Let's rejoice and be glad. And, and you know, I, I'm excited that you've all made a decision. You know what kingdom you're in. And my friend, don't you dare leave today and walk through those doors and not know what kingdom you're in. Make sure and grab some. Grab me. Tackle me. I don't care. Get it right today. Don't waste time. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. Don't waste time. Make sure you're in the kingdom of light. With all that being said, hey, do go and keep in mind we're having a Seder meal in April. Make sure and touch base with Jeff and Deborah uh, and sign up. If you have not signed up, up yet, please do so. That's a powerful time together. And in the upcoming weeks, you'll be hearing more about it. Make sure and touch base with them right here. Raise your hands right here. Yeah, they're the guilty party. Uh, make sure and touch base with them and sign that list. Which, by the way, I, I will say it again. I'm just a little bit jealous, I got to admit, confess your faults one to another, of how many people Jeff is getting on Wednesday nights. I never got that many. He's getting more than I. I think that's a great blessing. Come Wednesday nights, he's the professor you may have had in college that you thought, that's a pretty cool guy. So he's talking about creation and, and sci God and science. Make sure to come Wednesday night, 630. They're doing a great job. Uh, Bruce, would you please leave some prayer even today? Heavenly Father, this morning we thank you and we love you, mighty God. We thank you for your word, mighty God, for your presence this morning, mighty God. For each one that came out this morning, Father, we ask that uh, by your spirit to go with them right now as we go out of here, Father. We need you. Lead and guide us this week, Father. We bless you.